It's a beautiful day. Grab your gear. Let's go camping. Well, I found a nice place to set up camp, right between these two trees. I pace off the distance to see if it'll work for me. For me, it's about seven normal steps. And these are just right, so this is a nice spot. Kind of up high. I think it'll make for a good night's camp. All right, we've got the hammock up. Now it's time to put up the tarp. Well, we've got the tarp all set up now. So now it's time to find some firewood. Firewood's not too hard to find. It's everywhere. Well, I've processed enough wood, so it should be enough to cook with for tonight and even in the morning. As you can see, I've also found a stone to set up for a windbreak and to reflect a little heat. It's supposed to get pretty cool tonight. I think in about 41. Not too bad. Now I cut the wood very small, about the, the width of, of my palm. That's so when it's in the stove, it's low enough that it won't interfere with putting the pans on. So that's about as big as I ever need it. Now I can burn larger if I need to, but for a cooking fire, that's just about right. All right, this is how I prepare the Emberlet stove for cooking. If you can see the larger pieces, or about 70% of the volume and then I have smaller ones stuffed down in between them to help get it started. I've had several people ask me how, I, how I'm doing it so I thought I would go into a little bit more detail. Now on top of the larger pieces I've placed smaller pencil size across the top laying across like this and then on top of that I use cotton balls with petroleum jelly that's fire starter it's very easy and catches very easily now I've made friction fire with a bow drill and can do that it's nice to know how but I wouldn't want to rely upon it and why not make it easy on yourself I'm not out here doing survival, I'm camping. So that works very easy. And then on top of that, I'll put the very small lead size sticks on top of that, and then the fire will be ready for cooking. Here's my view from the hammock. There's a valley between that hill on the other side that you can see through the trees. And we're on the other side, up on the top as well. It's a beautiful spot. I've never camped here before. Looking forward to a very peaceful and wonderful night. Nice and quiet, secluded. It's not a campsite. It's just a spot in the woods.
Let me tell you about the kit I use for baking. This is very inexpensive aluminum mess kit from Tex Sport. You can see the pieces like this. There's a picture of them as they come. Now I take the lid and, and take the little handle off. You've got to take that off. I discard the handle for the frying pan. The frying pan becomes the lid to my bake set. And I use this pan and then this is the bottom pan. It's very inexpensive. It costs about ten dollars. It's very light. Very lightweight. And it works well. Although I'm about to retire this set just because it doesn't look very good anymore and it's so cheap to buy another kit. So this may be the last outing for this particular set. But I have another one coming. I wanted to show you this in case you wanted to know and get exactly the one I'm using. Alright, tonight we're going to make a cornbread, pepperoni cornbread. One of the things I like to do is to make sure I use ingredients that are easy to hike with. I don't bring cast iron or cans of beans or chili or things like that. So these things are easy to pack and easy to use. And let me show you what we're going to be using tonight. Some cornbread mix, some crushed Doritos, some jalapeno peppers, cheddar cheese, pepperoni, and crushed red pepper. Now I like mine pretty spicy as you can tell. Of course you can adjust the ingredients to your taste. Let's get to it. Okay, first thing we want to cut up the cheese. Some wonderful and del delicious cheddar cheese. All right, and there we have the beautiful cubed cheddar cheese. Place that in a bowl, our mixing bowl. Try not to drop any. One got out. Next, we add the cornbread mix itself. And the crushed red peppers. Not all of them, just a little dash of them. Just a little bit at a time. You don't want to put too much. You can always add more, but you can't take it out. And here's the cornbread mixture with the cheese and crushed red pepper. Not too wet. Then the next step is to layer the bottom of the pan with pepperonis. Nice layer of delicious pepperoni. Next we put in Doritos. Okay, I've got the Doritos in. I don't want to tilt the pan too much. Nice thin layer of crushed Doritos, regular Doritos. Now the cornbread mix goes in. Okay, we have that in the pan. Well, the last thing I put on is the jalapeno peppers. Now, these are special jalapeno peppers that were pickled in sweet pickle juice. So, they're pickled like sweet pickles. And so, they're hot and sweet. I don't know if you can find that where you are. Uh, but they're very good, and I really like them. So, now I'll set this aside, put the this lid on. Oh, notice that I suppose that's up, up about maybe halfway. If you can see that, about halfway. And I'll set this aside until I get the fire right and we'll start baking this pepperoni cornbread. Well, while that's getting going, I went, walked away from camp and cleaned the mixing bowl. 
And so now it's ready for breakfast in the morning. As you can see, it's starting to catch the, the bigger sticks just underneath that first layer. It's starting to get cool out also, so that, that fire feels good. That warmth feels really good. Mm. I'm going to have to put on a long sleeve shirt here in a minute. <clears throat> I haven't uh, touched the fire. It's just been burning and burning down. But I want to show you how I, I get the pan set for baking once again. Then the original kit, this would be the, the frying pan with the handle. But it's, it's the lid when you use it for baking. And this is the other side. Now for a spacer, you use the lid for the little pan with the, the handle, the knob removed. And it, it goes and creates space. And then the baking pan goes on top of that. set it on top. And we wait. One of the things you'll need is some leather gloves. They're not very expensive. You can get them at Walmart. It's been about 10 minutes. I've never timed these cooking process before because you kind of look at it. That looks about right it's rising up you have to think in terms of halves because uh, now we're going to take it off and turn it over and let the other side cook and now the top side the jalapeno side is now down and we'll let that cook I haven't touched the fire it's just going we'll let that let that go for five minutes or so and it should be ready. Well here's the finished product. It's starting to get dark a little bit <clears throat> so I hope you can see it. It came out a little more crumbly than I thought it would but that's just the way th these things go sometimes. Well, I'd hope to slice it but the pepperoni is very good. I'll try to slice it, but I'm afraid it's going to break apart. The cheese and the jalapeno and the Dorito inside you can see it mmm but let me tell you it tastes fantastic a little a little crunch a little sweet from those peppers the flavor that the Doritos add in fact I need to put it back in the bowl and pan and eat it out of the pan. Look at that. That cheese. Oh, that's good. Let me do that. I'm going to put it back in here and use this as a bowl. All right. So much for this experiment. The Doritos, pepperoni, cheddar cheese, cornbread. It's nice and done. It's just kind of crumbly. I think I needed a little more moisture in the mix. But it is tasty. Well, it's getting cold. I had to put my long sleeve on. And the sun's going down. So I'll be getting ready for bed. I'm turning in after this. So I'll see you in the morning. Well, there's nothing better than a fire when you're cold. And that feels great. It's 
been a good day. Good night. And good morning, everyone. What a wonderful night. Okay. Now, you may have noticed from last night that I had some wood stacked behind the stove. And that's the wood I plan to use this morning to make breakfast so it's ready and dry. And then I still have plenty of other wood that I had prepared. If I need it, I brought my old-fashioned percolator. It's aluminum and it weighs just a little bit more than the pot I normally bring to just boil water in so why not make real coffee and then I have this little jewel it's a brass light alcohol stove I didn't bring my white box this one has vent holes and you can adjust the uh, the level of the flame to achieve a simmer and so it's it has a little more uh, versatility than the white box which just goes full blast all the time so we'll try and use this one this morning I don't know if the camera could pick that up but the sound of coffee perking and the smells wonderful one of the most difficult things with these small percolators is to get a slow perk they tend to boil over if they get too hot and that's the problem with using an alcohol stove but with this little brass light with its adjustable flame level you can turn it down and get a nice slow perk which is perfect for making coffee for breakfast this morning I think I'm going to try something a little different it is the holiday season, and so instead of making biscuits, I'm going to try my hand at a pumpkin spice cake. How's that for breakfast? Okay, that fire is just about ready. Let me show you what the cake looks like before we put it on. Ah, there you go. That is a pumpkin spice there's no pumpkin in it but pumpkin spice coffee cake with pecans on top it turned out pretty good it looks like let's see let's cut this Pecans want to fall off. There we go. Pumpkin spice coffee cake for breakfast. Fantastic. That is really good. I want to give you another look at that cake. Excellent. Mmm. Great breakfast. Give it a try. What a beautiful morning. Just doesn't get any better than this. Mmm. 
well down to the last slice. If you were here, I'd be glad to share it with you. Well, the fire's just about gone. A couple of coals left. And it's just about time to pack up and head back. Thanks for coming along with me. Take care. I'll see you next time.